I've had a couple of requests for making a video on working with plague conditions since I made my introduction to plague video. So that's what I'm going to focus on today. Uh, specifically, I'm going to focus on working with time in plague, which I find I'm doing uh, most of the time. So uh, if you haven't seen my introduction to plague video and this is your first uh, look at plague, go ahead and check out that video first as I'm not going to cover the basics of working with plague, just on um, working with the conditions. So a couple of things uh, before we get started in actually making the conditions that you'll want to uh, just note as you're working on your conditions. The first thing, I highly recommend you check out Rex Beckett's Plague Basics Guide. You can find that on the Mi Casa Verde forum. It's just a PDF. It looks like this, uh, and it gives you all sorts of helpful tips and um, instructions for working with plague. So that's what I reference every time I'm building a new condition. You can see I've marked mine up, marked mine up a little bit uh, just with my notes. But definitely download this, check it out. Also, I recommend you check out your status window. If you go into your plague uh, plugin, you can click on the status button and then you will get uh, a status of all your triggers, your schedules, device properties, conditions, actions. So you can see when they were last true, last false, the state of them now. Uh, it's very helpful for debugging because you can see when they are on and off. So you can see if you actually triggered your schedule correctly uh, or your device, uh, things like that. So I highly recommend looking at that as you're developing. Another thing is uh, the status window for the, the UI. Uh, up here it will show you uh, if you have any errors in your plague. So just when you're re-hitting the save reload button over here, uh, it'll show you if you have any errors. So definitely check that out as well. That's also useful. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to show you is just a really basic schedule. So I'm going to click on the wrench to go into my properties of my plague, and I'm going to click on inputs. I'm going to then click on schedules and create a new schedule. So I'm just going to give my uh, schedule a name. I use this one for my Christmas lights, so I'm going to just call it S Christmas. Uh, and I'm going to do a start type of day of week. So I'm going to check all the days because I want my lights to turn on every day. And I'm going to choose for this time, I'm going to say at sunset. And uh, there's some other options here which I'm not going to use right now, um, but I'll just go over them quickly. So there's random delay. Uh, people will use this for turning on and off lights, uh, for maybe just security if they're away from their house. So you could say I want it to delay, uh, let's say 20 minutes. So I do 20, 0, 0, and you can see the format here. Uh, I generally put in the hours as well, just to zeros, and then it takes them out for me if it doesn't want them, but sometimes it seems like it does. Uh, so that's my random delay there, if I wanted it. For now, I'm not going to have it. And then a stop type, if I wanted to do it uh, for like night, so I use that condition sometimes. So I would do this S night, have it start at sunset, and then stop at sunrise. So I would choose day of week, check all the days, and then say time is sunrise. So that's nice. That can be useful for when I want conditions just to execute at night. But for my Christmas lights, the most basic example I can think of, I'm just going to have it start at sunset. So I just hit accept here, and that will save it there. So now I have my schedule created. I'm going to go to my conditions tab, and I'm going to create a condition for these lights. So I'm just going to do add row, and I'm going to give it a name. So I'm going to say uh, C Christmas lights. And then I need to put in my schedule here. So it's just S Christmas. So I go to conditions and just type S Christmas. So whenever my um, schedule is true, the action will be performed. So now I can go to the actions of this condition right here, and I'm going to edit. So I'm going to pretend that my test switch three are my Christmas lights. I could actually do all of these. If I had multiple switches or multiple devices for that, I could turn all of these on. And then I'm going to go to add a delay here. I'm going to choose manage delays and I'm just going to turn off my lights after four hours. So I just type in four, hit hours, then close. And now I'm my four hour delay. So now I can just turn each of these off. So I can just go to finished here 
And then it's going to say that I have three things happening immediately and then three things happening after a delay of four hours. So then I would just want to click Save. So why would I want to do this instead of just using uh, Vera's standard automation scenes? Uh, the reason for this, and I actually was doing that previously, uh, is because if you are working on Vera, uh, you have to do a save and that restarts it. Uh, you'll lose your memory of your delay. So if you are working on your Vera during that Christmas lights schedule that you have, uh, and then you uh, click save, the lights will not turn off because it forgets that delay. Okay, so now I want to talk about sequence expressions, which is where I believe Plague really shines. So I'm going to go and show you my cabinet lights um, conditions. Okay, so first I'm going to show you that how I turn on my cabinet lights. So this is um, the condition for turning my cabinet lights on automatically. So these are just standard triggers. So if I, I have a motion trigger here, so T Kitchen Motion, so if that's true, and my properties of my southeast outside light sensor is gr less than or equal to 200 and my kitchen cabinet light load level is equal to zero so that double equal sign means it's equal to zero that will turn on my lights the action for that see kitchen cabinet lights on auto will set my cabinet lights to 33 percent. So now I have uh, two conditions for turning off my cabinet lights. I have the C kitchen cabinet lights off manual on, so that's if I've turned my cabinet lights on manually, and then this one is C kitchen cabinet lights off auto on. So that's if they were turned on automatically. Now the way I differentiate between auto on and manual on is the load level is equal to 33%. So while that's not a perfectly flawless way for me, it's been good enough because the odds of me hitting 33% when I manually slide my dimmer up is very low. So that's what I've used to base this on. So to turn my lights off if it's been automatically put on, all I'm doing is testing to see if the properties of my kitchen cabinet lights, the dim level is equal to 33. So I use that equal equal 33. And here's where the sequence expression comes in. Uh, and I'm actually using nested expressions as well. Uh, so the sequence expression works like this. It's testing for the time that this, la that this item happened before uh, this semicolon. And then it's going to check the time of this next item after the semicolon. So this now is a special um, operator that you can use in a sequence expression that's checked every minute. So basically, if this makes no sense to you, what this will do is say if T Kitchen Motion happened five minutes or greater, then this will be true inside this parentheses, this sequence expression. So it's very basic, simple way to do time. Now the thing about using now, it's not ideal. Now is checked once a minute, so it's not super accurate, and it's also checked every minute. So it can use up more resources in your Vera uh, than if you were to use a timer, because that only is activated when you tell it to be turned on. But in my mind, it's it's a very simple way to use time in your conditions. Okay, so that's my basic sequence expression. Now with this one, I also want my lights to turn off if the light level is greater than or equal to 700. So I have that in a nested expression here contained within these parentheses. So here's my first condition. Uh, you know, if there's been no motion for greater than five minutes or if the light level is equal to 700. But those will only happen if this kitchen cabinet level is equal to 33. So as long as all of those are satisfied, then this action is performed and it's just basic turn off the kitchen cabinet lights. Now this one here is that will turn off my cabinet lights manually. So this is just checking to make sure that the kitchen cabinet light load level is not equal to 33. 
uh, and the T kitchen motion has not happened uh, for 30 minutes. So that's what this uh, sequence expression does here. Now, what I probably want to do actually is put in an additional condition here. So I'm just going to copy this one. And I'm going to put this in parentheses. And I'm going to put an and in here, and I'm going to say this load level is not equal to zero. Because I don't need this condition functioning every single time um, my motion has not occurred for 30 minutes if my light is already off. So that's going to just make sure that it's not already off so this condition doesn't fire and try to turn it off again. Okay, so then the action for this condition is just a really basic action. It just turns my lights off once my T kitchen motion hasn't happened for 30 minutes or greater. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is working with timers. Uh, timers are similar to using now, except for they're a little bit better uh, for uh, using less resources in your Vera, uh, because it's not checked every minute. It's only checked when it actually uh, is turned on or off. So the first thing you need to do when working with a timer is you need to set it up. So you go to your inputs, and it's going to be under schedules, and uh, you just create a schedule, and then you could just do... I'm going to do test timer. And the start time is going to be an interval. Start type. Uh, sorry, not an interval. A self retrigger or self trigger. So the the retrigger is what I almost always use. What that will do is enable this, the timer to, to restart itself if the condition is satisfied again. So I use timers a lot for my doors or my windows, uh, a way to kind of delay an action. So I want it to be able to retrigger if something else has changed. The self-trigger will just start itself and then run out. So someone might use that for, say, an alarm or something like that. If, if a, a device is triggered, you don't want them to be able to continually re-trigger it every time a door is open. You just want it to, to start right then. So I almost always use re-trigger personally. So you're going to say start type of re-trigger, and then the stop type, you're going to choose interval. Normally, at least I do. So this is the length of your timer. So I uh, have a couple of different timers depending on my use. So I would just maybe do a two minute timer. Whoops. So zero two, zero zero. And then you can just hit accept here. And now I have my test timer of an interval of two minutes. Okay, so now I would base some conditions off of that. Uh, I have a couple of examples in here already. Uh, some of them that I have, I'm actually going to show you in my status here because it's a little bit easier to see. So I have some triggers for, or sorry, some timers for my doors because I like to do a couple of different things with my doors if they're open. Uh, one of them, I'll turn off my thermostat. Well, I actually don't turn it off. I set it to uh, higher and lower temperature for heating and cooling. Um, and then I've also done things like alert if it's warmer outside than it is in the house, so maybe you want to close the windows, things like that. But I don't want it to happen every time someone walks through a door. Uh, so I've set a two minute door open uh, condition. So this is it right here. This is my door open. So I have if my front door is tripped or my kitchen door is tripped, uh, what that will do then is start my timer. So I'm going to actually go back into the UI and show you how to do that. So the condition is C door open, and that's these are just standard triggers of the front door is tripped or the kitchen door is tripped. So C door is open uh, is right here. And then my actions for C door is open, um, I'll go in here and edit. And to start the timer, this is where for me it was a little bit complex. Not Once you learn it, it's not bad, but it just wasn't um, super intuitive to me. You'll go to advanced, and then you need to go to um, scene is active. When all devices in a scene, that's what I choose. And then you'll pick a device, and you'll choose your play device, um, which is right there. So then I'll hit add. And then this is where you'll select start timer. And then the timer is, you'll have to actually remember this name. Minus S, 
test, oops, sorry, lowercase s, test timer. And then that will start um, my timer. Now, I don't choose the interval time in here. I like to see it uh, back in my schedule, but you could always change it to a different time here if you wanted to. Maybe you wanted to base it um, you know, for five minutes if a door's, a specific door has been opened, something like that. You could always reuse that timer for a different interval, but I just leave it here. Um, I already have this set, so I'm just going to delete this here, but I just wanted to show you how to create it. And then you just hit finished. That creates your timer to start it. So now that I have my timer going, here's my next condition. It also uses a sequence expression uh, to actually trigger after that timer has run out. So um, the sequence expression is right here. So I want to make sure my door has been open uh, before my timer runs out. But what you also want to do is make sure that your door is still currently open. Otherwise, this would trigger every single time the timer runs out because at some point your door is most likely going to be open. Well, I shouldn't say every single time, but it'll probably trigger often because your door is going to be uh, open after your door timers run out because it's not checking if it's still open. It's just checking if it was open prior to this timer running out. Hopefully that makes sense. And this is why this status comes in handy because this condition, oops, scrolled up too far, right here, C door open, you can see it's always going to have a true timestamp. So you want to check to make sure your door is still open, which is what this does. So my door is still open so that this condition is true and it happened before this timer has run out. So this exclamation point there means that it's not true. So that's just a way to have a timer um, and you can set it for whatever you want. I chose two minutes, um, but that will check that your doors have been open for two minutes or longer. So that wraps up my working with time plague video. I hope it was useful for you. Uh, definitely check out Rex Beckett's plague basics guide. Uh, you can refer to that as you're developing your own and feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments section. Thanks.